Hello everyone, Kanasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. Welcome to the episode where we are going to be feeding the beast, the ginormous interplanetary vessel that I constructed in the last episode. Well, it has no fuel in it at the moment, so over the course of this episode, what we are going to be doing is taking our fish and pellets from Collins Station all the way over at Armstrong. We are going to be transporting them to road to that rather large vessel, refueling it, sending up a crew, and then at the very end, we will be sending it onwards to its destination, which we will be seeing arriving, and I'll probably do most of the burn in the next episode, which hopefully should come out tomorrow. So I am having to edit both of these videos on the Saturday and do the voiceover for both of them because I am very busy this weekend, so I'm not going to be able to do it tomorrow, so I don't know if it's going to happen or not. I've got not very much time, but we shall see if that happens, because I do want to get the last one of all of this pre-recorded stuff out on Sunday. And then obviously after that, I am going to have to record some more. I think I am going to do some coming home live streams, because I feel like the next set of things that I will be doing in this series will be putting down a very big, a very ginormous and absolutely massive surface base on the surface of Armstrong. One that is going to be much better than Nuke Base 1 that we have down there currently. Anyway, what we have been doing so far is getting this fish and pellet transportation device. Yes, the, the fish and pellet transporter device and getting it over from Armstrong. And we can now see the interplanetary vessel, the Eve class interplanetary vessel has come into view. And it's just going to be a quick little docking maneuver before we are able to transfer the first lot of fish and pellets over to this. So. The transporter is only going to be able to take one lot of fish and pellets at a time. We are going to have to do this a couple of times because if I wanted to do all of it at once, we would have needed a ludicrously large vehicle in order to get the liquid fuel and oxidizer required to actually perform all the burns to get over to the vessel and then back to Collins Station to be refueled. It would have been a real pain. So we are going to have to do a couple of these. I feel like this is going to be the best way of going about doing this. But anyway, in the blink of an eye, we have docked that up. We have transferred the fission pellets over. And now we have about 5,000 meters per second of Delta V in the EVE class interplanetary vessel, which probably is enough to get to some interplanetary destinations. However, with this first, with the maiden voyage of this vessel, we are wanting to go a little bit further. I don't want to go to one of the local bodies. No, I, I want to go a bit further. I want to go somewhere that's a little bit more exciting. So the target that I've picked, not just because it's the first interplanetary transfer that we do have after, we, after we'll be able to get all of the fuel up, is going to be Gateway. Just because Gateway, it's the gas giant of the system, except it's not really a gas giant because you can land on it. But it, it's much more interesting. It has many moons. So that will be our target destination. But what we are doing now is just trying to get this vessel back to Collins Station. And you can see we only have 344 meters per second of Delta V left at this stage after having formed our capture around Armstrong. We are not going to have much Delta V at all. I did mess up the transfer a little bit. My maneuvers weren't the most efficient, but still this was damn tight. But we are able to get back because performing maneuvers around Armstrong, because it is such a small moon, you really don't need an awful lot of Delta V to get anywhere around Armstrong's sphere of influence. And we finish on 325 meters per second of Delta V, which is quite a comfortable margin if you are going to ask me. And just like that, we are able to dock this back to Collins Station where it will be ready to transport more fission pellets in the future. But unfortunately, we do not have any fission pellets on that station at the moment. So what we're going to do is we are going to come back down to Nuke Base 1 and I'm going to show you just how tedious it is to actually create the enriched uranium here. So I make the enriched uranium in the Whirlyjig nuclear pre reprocessor, which we can see going on at the moment. You can see that enriched uranium is going up. Then what you have to do is you have to wait for the core temperature to go below 450 before you can transfer that out, which is a real pain. The radiators on here are sufficient to do that, but it takes a while. Then once that's done, we have to do that all over again. And it takes many, many, many days to do this. And one problem with this system is, is that the enriched uranium produced only goes into that Whirlyjig nuclear reprocessor. 
it will not transfer into any other storage containers that have the capacity to take enriched uranium. So in order to produce enriched uranium here, I really have to babysit that base. There is a Tundra part that actually can produce enriched uranium, which works differently. It will send that enriched uranium into other storage devices on board the craft. I've not unlocked that yet. I will be unlocking that very soon. That is one of the things on my to-do list of things to urgently acquire. And then as soon as we've got that, it will make enriched uranium processing so much simpler. And it will mean I don't have to babysit my bases constantly. I can just leave them running in the background. And I found out as well, the nuclear drums that we can see on the top of Colin Station at the moment, they work with USI, Planetary Logistics. So we can actually store enriched uranium within the planetary logistics and move it around the planet to our heart's content, which is going to be absolutely fabulous. It means I can really just leave it, do whatever it wants and not have to worry about enriched uranium production ever again. But what we did there was we did refuel up this fission pellet transporter using the fuel that we managed to mine from the surface of Armstrong. And once again, we are coming back to the EVE planetary vessel. I skipped out most of the maneuvers for this because obviously I've already shown it once in this video. We don't really want to be showing repeated fuel trips over and over and over again. I feel like that would be very boring. And I did mention in the last episode, obviously I don't show just regular re supply runs or anything like that. Reason being is, yeah, once again, I think that'd be boring. The reason why I'm showing both of these this time is because, you know, it's something new, it's something interesting, and I did want to show you that I have filled up that interplanetary vessel to completion using nothing but mined resources. Yes, we didn't take anything from road for that vessel. We were able to mine absolutely everything on the surface of Armstrong, convert that into the fuel that we needed in orbit of Armstrong, and then, of course, we took that transporter and moved it over to road. The only thing now that that interplanetary vessel is missing is a crew. So we're going to get Ziggy Kerman III, Maximus Kerman, Kerman Kerman, Baldy Kerman, Peter Kerman, Cullum Kerman, and Rags Kerman on board a Manta. And we are going to send them up. Rags Kerman is not going to be going on this mission, though. He will be flying the Manta to the EVE class and back, but he will not be going all the way out to Gateway. No, the other six Kerbals will. So I, I do feel a bit sorry for him. He isn't going to get to see the pretty sights or anything like that, but he will get to go to space today at least. He, he's, he's not going to be stuck on road. He, he'll have a bit of an exciting adventure flying the Manta there and back again. But we are able to get the Manta into orbit and once again we are able to recover the first stage booster just fine. Didn't put the tracking screen up for this because I don't want to use that in every single launch, you know. We want to save that sometimes for special things and it is a bit of a pain to put that all together in editing. So I'm not going to use that all the time, but there we go. We can see we now do have the crew over at the EVE class. And there have been a lot of names suggested for this in the last episode. Thank you for all of your comments for the names. I've not been through all of them yet because obviously I have been really busy live streaming. I've been live streaming every day this week and also putting these videos together. Basically, my entire life at the moment has been dedicated to putting these videos together. I will go and look through them and I think I will do a poll for the name of this class. Unfortunately, it will not be named before we actually make our way out to Gateway. Like I said, I'm probably going to be editing the next video as soon as I finish this voiceover, so I'm still not going to get the chance to go and look through all of those properly. But as I said, this should be a reusable interplanetary vessel, so this will not be the only flight of this vessel. The good thing about this is we can take six Kerbals at once, we can take eight Kerbals at once if we really wanted to, possibly even more. There is space on this vessel for, I think, about 24 Kerbals, but there is space for eight Kerbals in deep free storage, which is... That, that's kind of the max that I want to take, because then that way we don't have to worry about food, water, oxygen supplies, all of that stuff on the way to our destinations. No, we only need to worry about the supplies that we have when the Kerbals are unfrozen. But still, this means that we probably will be using this quite a lot. It's relatively easy to produce the fuel. As soon as we've got the new surface bases up on Armstrong, it will be incredibly easy to produce the fuel for this. So 
we will be making a rather large amount of use out of these. And I did say that I'm probably going to make a couple of these, or at least another, another two, and then we'll have three. And these may be, at a future date, once we've got more advanced technology, sort of a crew transport system to get us around the Tempest system. Because they can pretty much go everywhere. I'm not sure if they'll be able to go to Vasto, because obviously that is quite far out. Or Fury, they can't go to Fury. But Saith, Sindo, which is the moon of Saith, I don't know why I said that. Saith, what's the other one? Hydrus, Gateway. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to go to those three, and I feel like we'll be visiting those planets quite a lot. But we were able to transfer the crew across, and once again, we are able to bring Rags Kerman down, successfully down at the Space Center. Another successful runway landing for the Manta. Yes, these are becoming rather simple to do now. So what we're gonna do now is just come back to the EVE class, make sure that everything is all all right, gather any science in low road orbit that we can, because there are a few scientific experiments on this vessel that I have not actually used before. The Coppola module has an additional scientific experiment. So we're gonna grab that, we're gonna throw them all into a laboratory, and yeah, we'll, we'll just harvest science around road before plotting out our course over to Gateway and getting ready to fire up that pulsed fission engine, which is basically a mini Orion drive. And it is very tasty. 9,500 seconds of vacuum ISP, and it's got quite a bit of thrust. It does take a bit of electric charge to charge it up, but we do have a rather chonky nuclear reactor on board this vessel, which is going to be more than capable of providing the electric charge to fire this up any minute now. And there we go. The pulsed fission drive, or the pulsed fission engine, the Vern, has now been activated, and our craft is on its way to Gateway, in which we will arrive in the next episode. Until then, I hope you have enjoyed this. I have been Karnassa, and I will see you later.